right. So this is week week six of quarantine cooking and week four of Real Moms and Real Chefs. Crazy. Welcome everyone. Welcome Lisa and Kathy. Um, so what we are doing today is we are going to do a festive cocktail for mom because I think moms need them right now. Um, and then we are going to make Dutch babies. We're going to do them a few different ways. And then we're going to do a parfait, which is a super easy way to make a breakfast. that's very um, fun and pretty and elegant when it's really just yogurt and berries. <laughs> and, um, and then we are going to, Karen is going to show us how to make the most adorable crafts for mom that you have ever oh boy. Made. So um, let's get started with a cocktail. So um, this is Prohibition Spirits. They are up in um, Sonoma. And this is the um, Mint Melon. And they're actually gonna be on quarantine, um, quarantine cocktails next Friday. Um, but oh, wow. For, but for now, so it's a, a mint uh, melon gin. And so what we need to do is we need to muddle some mint and some melon. So you can use any kind of melon, um, cantaloupe, honeydew. So we're just gonna muddle a little bit and then we're gonna make a few balls to put in the um, martini glass. So it's just, it's, um, you know, we eat with our eyes first. Um, so when you see something really pretty, you anticipate it tasting pretty. And when you see something that's not so pretty, <laughs> you, you don't anticipate it tasting pretty. Laura, what does muddle yeah. mean? It means um, mush up. <laughs> the official word, official term. Okay. So we're going to put some um, melon in the in the glass like this. This is a this is a muddler. You can see that. So if you've ever gone out to a bar and they muddle, you'll see them with the mojitos. You muddle you muddle mint into a mojito. So you smash it up with the sugar and the, um, the mint. Oh. It's pretty already. There's not even alcohol in it yet. So we just muddle, which means smash it up. So we're smashing the mint and the um, and the melons together just to release the juices that will mix in with the um, with the alcohol. If we have a muddler, can we just food process it? Yeah, yeah. You can use. Um, gosh, if you have the back of the end of. I got something. I got something. A spoon. Like if you have the bottom of a bottle, you can use like the bottom of a bottle to mask it. Anything, anything like that. Oh, okay. I don't have a muddler. I can't believe John doesn't have a muddler. I know. Got a rolling pin. That works. Perfect. Got a rolling pin. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So this is what it looks like inside. It's all if you can really see it. It's all mushed up. So we are just going to add um, add the gin. Liberally. Liberally, very. Put some ice in. Take her up. Oh, that's so cool. Then you add a little, um, we'll add a little sparkling wine, sparkling water. Mm. Laura, could you make that just with sparkling water? You absolutely could, but why would you? <laughs> well, yeah, if, um, if, my kids want, if kids want a mocktail, they can. Absolutely. No, yeah, it would be perfect. 
So you do the same thing. You just, just put all sparkling water instead of. Yeah. You guys see that? Yeah. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. Beautiful. You just do a little mint. I can't find melon. What do we think? Like strawberries or. Yeah, strawberries and the kind of berries, anything, any kind of fruit. Yeah. Um, it's just about, it's just about infusing flavors is really what it is. So, um, herbs, any kind of herbs, tarragon is really good in, in these, um, tarragon and gin, because it has a little bit of an anise flavor. Oh, okay. interesting. So, um, yeah, any kind of fruits, melons, berries, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, and then the alcohol and then a little garnish and, um, cheers, ladies. Cheers. <laughs> Clink. Oh. Cheers. What's the name of the uh, gin company again? It's called Prohibition Spirits. Huh. Do you think they'll mail it to me? Yeah, they shipped it. Of course. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, do they'll need, be on Friday. Do you need that gin or could you use like... No, you could use any, any alcohol, any gin, vodka. Um, pick your poison. Um, it's just, uh, you know, whatever you like. I probably wouldn't, could even go bourbon if you want, but um, yeah, it's just, you're just flavoring. So this is specifically mint uh, melon gin, but if you just had um, got alcohol in my veins. <laughs> um, I need a rack. <laughs> all right, so are we ready to start with Dutch babies? Yeah, let's, let's kick it live. They I'm are. Okay, so um, you do a Dutch baby in um, in a usually you do it in a, a paella pan or you can use a cast iron pan, um, just something with um, sloping sides because the the um, Lenka, yours came out perfectly. Um, uh, it wants to the the pancake rises up around the sides, um, but you can also do it individually in tins. So. Um, Mary, what were some of the ideas you had on, on the, um, on the uh, fillings? Oh, yeah. Um, well, actually, Laura, can you show a pan, a big pan? Yeah. For everybody? Just that's the way we've always made them, and we cut them in half and give every, everybody a half. Because uh, uh, they're so yummy, you want a good chunk. So. I love the little individual ones, but also the. Um, so this is this is a stob wok pan. So see how it's got the sloping sides. So you see, we, we've, always, we've always made them in a flat uh, saucepan with little like sides about you know this. And then a cast iron. No, um, just a like a. Pan that has like sides about this big on all the way around and so that it just curls up the side. Yeah, 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 more like that. Yeah, but not a. Um, so, one of the things you can do too is you can flavor it. So, I'm going to put in a little orange zest this time. But let's get, where's my butter? Where's my butter? So, this is half a cup of butter. Since I'm going to split it up, I'm going to put them in two. I'm going to do half and half. We'll see what happens. I've never done this, so blind leading the blind. Um, so Mary, what were some of the other fillings? So we, we talked about you can yeah. make these sweet, you can make them savory. Um, I think the ones we grew up with, it was um, you just squeeze a little lemon and put some powdered sugar on it. But you can make these, um, you know, you can do bananas and Nutella, or you can do bacon and cheddar, um, any, any combination. Do you think of it kind of as scrambled eggs or pancakes or um, whatever you would include in them? Yeah. And then the good thing about the individual ones is if your kids have different tastes, then each, they each get their own individual. They can make it how they want it. So, um, can I use our, a ramekin for this? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, try it. It should be good. Is it, are the sides higher? Uh, 
Let me check. They're like, I don't know, like an inch and a half or so. It's not as deep as yours. But like, you can try it. Yeah. That's all I got. I roasted garlic last night and I forgot it. In the oven. I wonder why it smelled like garlic. <laughs> oh my God, I'm losing my mind. All right, so I'm gonna try and well, so I'm gonna put those in there. Oven's at 425. And then this is all gonna go really quickly. So we're just gonna put, the great thing about this is, um, let's see. That um, you only have to clean one pan and one blender. Laura, you want to mention the cracking the egg thing? Oh, yeah. Thank you. So um, you want to crack. You never want to crack the egg on an edge of a bowl or a blender or whatever you're cracking it on because that's going to push the, the shells into the egg. You just want to crack it on a flat surface. And you want to try and hit the fattest, fattest part of the egg. And then you can usually get a pretty clean cut across. Can you guys see that? It really eliminates the shells going into your mixture. Yeah, so give it a whack, not too much. So you can get a pretty clean break from it. And then if you do need to separate the eggs from the yolks, um, it's easier to do with a, with a sharp, with a flat um, edge as opposed to jagged. So see how it's, you guys can see how it's a pretty clean, pretty clean cut. You're gonna, that's gonna go in the blender for just a minute. You wanna get it really fluffy and frothy. Now, where's my lid? When, um, one second. Laura, when I make them, I just throw in the eggs, throw in the milk, throw in the flour, zip it up and pour it in the pan. Like it's, it's, it's the most flexible recipe. I just, it's great. So you don't run the eggs first? No, but go ahead. I mean, I'm just saying, like, if you're in a rush. Well, we can do it. If it works, it works. That's all that matters. OK, milk. We have a cup and a quarter, cup and a half of milk. I use Strauss milk, milk, whole milk. Um, it's just, I think they've got the best milk out there. So a cup and a half of milk. And then so a cup and a half of um, flour. So when I buy flour, I always put it, anything, I usually try and put um, everything into a mason jar right away because it keeps it, um, it keeps it fresher so much longer. And um, if you, I don't have them here, thank God, but it'll keep bugs out <laughs> if you happen to be prone to bugs. So there's half a cup. You guys hear your butter bubbling in the oven? There's one cup. Yeah, you want to make sure not to let your butter burn, right? Yeah. All right, so this just goes right in the... in the oven. So what I was saying earlier about the lid, so when you're blending anything hot, you never want to um, seal up the uh, seal up your blender because if it's hot, you know, hot uh, expands and, um, and it will explode all over your kitchen. One time we were making tomato soup and I did this and it looked like Chainsaw Massacre. So, <laughs> so but you can do it. If it's cold, you can put the lid on. You're basically done. So I'm going to add a little flavoring to this. So I'm going to add some orange zest just to add some flavor to it. 
Um, you don't have to at all, but um, I just thought I'd try it. I've never done it this way, so but I thought it might be cool, cool to, uh, to see it. Or what would it, would vanilla be good in this? Yes, it'd be delicious. I wonder about lemon zest, Laura. Yep, you can put lemon zest, absolutely. That is all you need to do. It's easy. It's almost so easier than pancakes, because pancakes, not unlike crepes or waffles, it's the short order cook syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly. That's why I love these. And you can even make the batter ahead of time and refrigerate it. Would it be a How long, long do you think you can leave it in the fridge? Probably a week. Oh, wow. Okay. And then just, we just blend it up when you... Um, yeah. I think I filled my cups too uh, high. <laughs> It'll be fun to see what they look like, Karen. Yeah. They'll, they'll be growing but up and out. They'll still off. be delicious. They'll still be yummy. Leave it to me. This goes back in. You guys, just a warning, because I've done it many times, is just to be really careful with these pans when you're putting them in and out and serving. I'm sorry. A little salt. I'm so tired. Um, a little pepper. So you always want to season everything. I'd like to report my Dutch babies are growing. Yay! Laura, how long are they? How long are you going to have them in there? It says uh, twenty to twenty-five. Yeah, yeah. We have need... twenty. I'll check it. I'll probably check because the little ones. I'll check in about ten minutes. Oh, good point. Yeah. So today I'm just going to add a little bit of tarragon in this just because I've got tarragon in there and I don't use tarragon too often, but um, I just thought I would add a little flavor. It's all about adding flavor and changing things up so we're not eating the same thing every day, even though we might be eating the same thing every day. Um, and then I'm going I'm to put some uh, cheddar and then I had some Parmesan left over. So I'm just going to grate some cheddar when you add the cheese like I've done it from the beginning to the end and there's probably a right way I'm 55 and I don't know what it is <laughs> <laughs> where is where's the butter what did I do with the butter my brain is stopped looking anyways we got enough butter so can you guys see the stove Over yeah. here? okay so we're gonna put it on um medium low and we are just going to add the add eggs and then you want to um, you want to use a non-stick and uh, and so you want to also want a, a silicone spatula that can stand up to the heat so one of these guys these are called spoonulas because they're kind of curved like a spoon, but um, so, you know, let it cook a little bit. And when you see it starting to cook, we're just gonna, we're, yeah. while we're doing this. You just see, I've got a couple of minutes. I'm checking, I, I did them for 10 minutes, my babies, and now I'm gonna check every five minutes. So I got about four minutes and I'll start the parfaits, but I have to, if I have to jump over to my oven. Okay. Um, so the parfaits are really, there's no rocket science, which is why I'm the one showing this. But um, just really uh, mom's favorite yogurt, mom's favorite fruits, and then there's a gajillion different toppings that you can, um, not unlike Dutch babies, but that you can uh, put on for color and for um, flavor and texture. So I do not have beautiful um, martini glasses. So I found kind of an old um, cut glass from my grandmother actually. 
And um, this will make a really pretty dish, I thought, for, now it's huge, so if you're just making it for mom, we're not gonna fill it with yogurt unless she's a yogurt fiend. But let me run and get my yogurt. Everybody keep stirring your eggs, right, Laura? What? My, uh, have, my stove was not. <laughs> I have what they call uh, a galley kitchen here on the Naval Station. So it's super, super long and skinny, like the galley on a ship. They call it a galley kitchen. And um, anyway, I get my steps in. Um, so I'm back from my fridge. And all I'm going to do is use, well, my favorite yogurt, which right now is Greek with a little vanilla flavor. It's like candy. Um, and I'm gonna put a little bit in the bottom of my bowl. Maybe a half a cup, maybe less, but maybe a half a cup. And then I've got all these fun things like berries and nuts. Can, my can, you, tip, can you tip it down just a teeny bit oh, so you can see? see? Not really, but I'll try. Okay. It's Where's okay if you can. It's okay. Is that better? Yeah, perfect. So that's kind of how much I put in the bottom, just because, I mean, you don't really need a vat of yogurt, so of course I love that. Um, I've got some beautiful, beautiful blueberries that I found at our commissary this week. So I'm gonna throw a few on the floor. I'm gonna throw a few on the floor. <laughs> and, um, and now I'm gonna pick them up so I don't step on them. Karen, we need to take really a quick break. Karen, let's take a quick um yeah quick okay, break. Yes. So, um, so the egg, now that I have the heat on, the uh, eggs are cooking. We want to go really low and slow and um, and just start stirring the cheeses in. So see how it's not drying out at all? And then I just had some leftover parm. From the, from the lamb last night. So I'm gonna throw in a little parm because it gives it a tangy, good, good flavor. So see how creamy these are? Can you see these? Yeah, they look great. Yum. That looks great. So, I mean, they're almost cooked. I mean, the, the cheese makes it pretty creamy as well, but you can do this with cheese, without cheese. Um, but you don't need to add cream or milk to eggs. I don't care who says to do it. They look amazing. Oh gosh, they're so good. Like we've been, um, my daughter's been putting them in a tortilla with salsa and avocado. Yeah, that would be um, great. She loves it. Um, good. And you know break these apart and I made heart ones last night oh so, so cute uh, uh, so just um just spoon the eggs over if you need a little need a little bread there you go Wow. That's it. And they're so creamy. I'm gonna get out of here. I mean, they're almost, it's almost like grits, kind of that texture. I mean, you don't get, it's not like you're not chewing on the egg. It's, it almost just melts. Yeah, they're so yummy. Oh my gosh. Are you making it, Dorothy? Uh, I'm gonna do the Dutch baby. I haven't made that. Okay. I, I think I might do that for Mother's Day. Cool. All right. So, sorry, Karen, back to the parfait. No, no, it, it's all good. I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot of rocket to it. There's my couple of berries. I sliced up another favorite, which is um, strawberry. I mean, it's just so pretty. Actually, right now, you could probably salute that, which we're not going to do today. But, you know, <laughs> how it rolls. I love a little, um, a little nut, a little nut for the nut. So I put a few nuts on top there. Um, you don't really need uh, honey, but uh, I'll put it on top actually, that'll be fun. And then you can just layer another little bit of yogurt. And just do a couple of more. I won't use the blueberries that hit the floor, I promise. A couple more blueberries. 
as far as you all know, and just repeat and just make it kind of pretty and fun. So at the end, I'm looking at kind of a pretty parfait, and then I'll throw a little bit of honey on top, especially if you use another favorite, which is sort of a, um, uh, the plain Greek yogurt. I love plain Greek yogurt, but I love it most with a little bit of honey. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a really pretty festive um, fruit parfait and so easy for the kids to do for mom. So um, you can leave this, this day of menu for the dad to find and then facilitate with the kids. So the only thing that wouldn't would be uh, what would be necessary is to be careful with the knife with the kids. But otherwise, easy peasy, beautiful, and delicious. Yay! Thank you. Well, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do a version here. Um, so I, I had these leftover biscuits, so I crumbled a little bit of one into them. And then I have this blood orange lemon curd that I made a few weeks ago. I'm gonna spoon that in, because the, the concept of the parfait is really about the layering and the colors. It's all about uh, it's all about the visual that we've talked about a lot. Is your lemon curd pink? Um, I use blood orange and lemon. Oh, oh, man, that sounds so good, Laura. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Can that another day. Yeah. Can you scooch it a little closer to the camera? There you go. Thank you so much. Or, so it's really all about the layers. Ooh, gosh. Laura, I don't want to go too off topic, but can you just say, like, how do you make a curd? What's... It's um, lemon juice, eggs, sugar. And you just beat it? To um, you cook it. You cook it over... So here's a here's another way to another way to parfait. And that's so pretty because in a glass like that, um, you really can see those layers. Yeah. Of, it's just, I mean, like I said, anything in a martini glass is, is going to be festive. So I mean you've got the you can you can crumble up a cookie. Um well, hazelnut cookies that I love. Um, you can crumble a cookie, you can, you know, if you have leftover cake, leftover brownie that on it. and um, you know like I said parfait is really it's all about the visual and the layers. So granola is a big parfait ingredient as well. Pardon? Granola. Yeah. Oh, yeah yeah and you can put oh I forgot I was going to chop up some nuts you can sprinkle Karen did, um, you can sprinkle some um, granola if you've got really healthy yeah. healthy people you can put honey you can put a little honey or caramel on it or Something like that. <laughs> you know, if you wanna if you wanna plate these. Or that probably isn't the <laughs> I don't know how to plate it. <laughs> but, um, Break it open. I think that'd be cool. If we need a parfait glass for that thing. Right? It'd be perfect for a parfait glass. Yeah. So just Break it open like that. Um, you know, you can throw in some strawberries. Do some, throw some blueberries in here. Um, I want to do some lemon juice or some orange juice over it. So I know the the recipe Mary and I grew up with was lemon lemon juice and uh, and powdered sugar. Is that from some specific country? It's from Sunset Magazine. <laughs> we used to call them German pancakes. And that was a, I think, I think that's, it was yeah. a big dish. Yeah, I think that's why they're Dutch, because they're Deutsch, that's like true. the Pennsylvania Dutch. Because mm -hmm. um, in Pennsylvania, they make these ones where there's apples at the bottom of the pan, and then you flip oh. that over. Oh, I think it's very similar. Gorgeous, Laura. Wow. What I love about the individual ones for those people who like the crust the most, you get more crust in a in a in an individual one than when you get a piece of the pan. So kind of like those bread pans that give you all edge pieces. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh, so good. I suspect my oven is not quite at the right temperature because it's still going. <coughs> You're getting surprising not browning too much yet. There we go. Dorothy, you, you did one last week, right? That was a couple weeks ago. It was perfect. Yeah, it was really great. The girls loved it. So this is my second time now making it. I'm going to use uh, three of the ramekins. That's all I could find. And then I'm going to put the rest into my um, pan. My pan's smaller than these ones, so I think it'll it'll be enough. I'll try it. Yeah, just you just experiment with your with your um, batter and your pan size to kind of get it where you guys like it. Like Lindsay was saying, you know, crust versus the soft parts and all that. You just kind of play around with it each time. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. How big are the ramekins you're using, Dorothy? Are they like the little, like, kind of itty bitty ones? Mm, they're, uh, they're a good size. I just put them in the oven, so I can't show you, but they're probably like three inches diameter and one and a half inches high. So I'll probably fill it halfway with a batter each. Um, if you make too many eggs, switching subjects, sorry, you can actually put the eggs in here with some chives and some sour cream, creme fraiche. Oh, God, yum. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't even think of that. Because <laughs> I was thinking, what am I gonna do with these eggs? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you mentioned um, uh, smoked salmon and capers and creme fraiche. We can put that on there. Um, does anybody, live, Dorothy, you want to come get my Dutch baby? <laughs> <laughs> well, had I known you were going to offer, I probably wouldn't be making this right now. <laughs> and that would have way too much. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> Laura, you must be the most popular girl in your building. <laughs> hey, Laura, while we're talking about berries, do you want to um, mention about the strawberries taking the stem out kind of thing? Oh, I just, shoot, I cut them all up. Okay, no biggie, no never, biggie. Um, if they're ripe, you never just want to hack the, the top quarter off because you're losing so much good strawberry. Just take a small paring knife and use my small paring knives. Um, there we go. What you want to do is just put the put the tip in. You guys can see this. Mm -hmm. Tip into this into the uh, into the tomato. Same thing on a tomato. Awesome! Wow. Can you it's see? Perfect. It? Oh, nice. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, it's that's awesome. awesome. Boy, oh, that's huge. A volcano in the middle. <laughs> I've got baby envy. <laughs> um, no, it's perfect. And then just let it sit in like 10 minutes. It'll, it'll go down. That's crazy. Right in. Lisa, do you have any, um, any questions? Me. Yeah. Your neighbor, Karen? Well, I, I've taken them out, and I'll bring them over to show. So, it's a lot of butter down in them. Oh, it's perfect. Oh my yeah. gosh, those look great. Yeah, it's good. I did it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yum! God. See how easy it is? Those look so good, Karen. Now, now Laura, here's a question for you. How do you warm these little babies up if it, if they get cold? Like while you're waiting for people to get out of bed or get down to breakfast or whatever, like if they get, I mean, it's nice to have them nice and hot, but how, what's the best way to? Um, I would maybe just pop it back in the oven for a minute or two. But you don't want to cook it too much. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. They are overcooked. I think they, they look perfect, Karen. Well, they're, they're a little bit 
Well, they also, I didn't, you know, have the same measure for each cup I tried, but some were a little bit higher than others. So the ones that had more, you know, they cooked a little bit differently. I'm sure they'll be delicious because, I mean, I'm going to throw some sugar on them. <laughs> Um, no, I think they're fine. Karen, yeah. look over. It'll all work. I mean, if they were cooked, they'd be dark brown. Yeah, 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 I get you. So I think you're fine. So fun. Lincoln, did you make them? No, not today. I made the, uh, I've made them twice already. Okay. And each time, I feel like it's art, because each time you get a different, different shape where they come out, it's like, what is it going to be today? <laughs> they're so good oh my gosh I can eat half of one myself but it's six eggs yeah yeah that's Dorothy, some good protein Dorothy seriously come by and get this please <laughs> put mine in the oven oh, okay. <laughs> um any questions on the food before we jump over to um Karen's amazing arts and crafts oh boy All right, I'm gonna eat if you guys don't mind. Oh, I'll show our, um, well, you guys can talk about that when we get to it. All right, I'm just trying to pull this sucker out to plate, to plate it, it's trying to be really cool. Okay, then I'll start. So um, one of the things that we wanted to do is how do, you, how do you really celebrate your mom, celebrate the people that are like moms to you, the special people in your life, while you're in quarantine? You can't see them, you can't go out and do the normal things, usually equate brunch so we tried to make some easy things that you could do at home for your mom um, and then another thing we thought of was <clears throat> um, mom superpower cards so a little gift that you can give to your mom that are um, you can just make up these little cards they're like a little gift certificate for your mom like one hour without asking any questions or um, one you know good one um, thing or whatever it is that you need um, in one moment of poop <laughs> in peace but we made these little cards and we'll put up the template on um on the on the facebook page we'll put the link to the template and um, we just use the an avery template so you can do them at home as well but um if you want to download this and just write them out and give a little stack put it in a mother's day card for your mom um with ideas and um or you know an hour of peace, an hour with no questions. You guys tell me what you what you want. <laughs> but um, so this is one of the things that we came up with. So cute. And there's my plate. And the non-chef. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's something you want to order um, for brunch. You know, if you were to go out, that, that looks really lovely, Karen. Thank you. Just give me some ideas out there on what is, you know, quick and fast and easy and possible. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. It's great. Anybody have any other ideas? John, what are you going to do for Dorothy? <laughs> Which would be surprised if I told you. <laughs> but the thing I just saw about creating, that, that's, uh, you know, that might show up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anything with, like bubbly wine is always a good thing. Uh, so yeah. it makes it something of that nature. And all the girls like to make pancakes, so. Oh, good. They won't ask for it. We'll see. Well, if you want, I'll make it. You can sneak over here and get it and bring it back quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no fair! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, any other thoughts? Karen, those were great. Thank you. You're welcome. That was a lot of fun. Yay. Another, awesome. Thanks, everybody. Another cooking show in the books. Mm -hmm.